If far left members of Congress, including the squad, have their way, the establishment of the state of Israel would officially be called a catastrophe. Quote unquote. They've introduced a resolution to describe the events surrounding Israel's founding with the Arabic word Nakba, catastrophe in English. The resolution also lays out history of the founding of Israel, claiming Zionists started the violence, something that completely contradicts how the United States government characterizes what happened. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib wrote the resolution with support from co-sponsors, squad members Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilan Omar, as well as other progressive Democrats. The resolution calls on the United States to commemorate the Nakba through official recognition and remembrance and claims that this refers not only to a historical event, but to an ongoing process of Israel's expro expro expropriation of Palestinian land and its dispossession of the Palestinian people that continues to this day. The resolution claims in 1948, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians fled their homes after, quote, attacks by Zionist militias, which, again, is at odds with our State Department, which asserts that Arabs and Palestinians first attacked Jewish city settlements and armed forces. Congresswoman Tlaib tweeted, quote, On this day, we must promote human rights and justice. The Palestinian people, since the 48 Nakba, have been living under oppression and violent racism. Silence and blank checks enables more death and violence. Jamal Bowman, who also co-sponsored the resolution, tweeted, no one should be driven from their home. Today, I'm proud to be an original sponsor of a resolution recognizing the Palestinian Nakba, which commemorates the 74th anniversary of the tragedy where 700,000 Palestinians fled and were expelled from their homes, making them refugees. Now, putting aside the factual questions with that assertion, not surprisingly, on MSNBC, the resolution was celebrated. May the 15th, millions of Palestinians in the occupied territories, inside of Israel, and across the world, across the diaspora, marked Nakba Day. Nakba is Arabic for catastrophe, and Nakba Day commemorates the catastrophe endured by Palestinians during the creation of Israel. What will it take for the United States, which partly funds the Israeli military, to help these people, to help Palestinian refugees? On Monday, Representative Rashida Tlaib, the first Palestinian-American woman elected to Congress, introduced a pretty remarkable resolution in the House. Remarkable it is. Did you see that Chiron said remembering the Nakba? Now, putting aside MSNBC and left-leaning media ignoring the deadly attacks by Palestinians on Israeli citizens in recent months, Israel was established in 1948 with the full support of the international community as the UN General Assembly passed Resolution 181 recommending the creation of an independent Jewish state in the wake of World War II. Congresswoman, back in September when nine Democrats, many of whom are behind this new resolution, voted against legislation that would provide a billion dollars in supplemental military assistance to Israel, the bill providing funding to Israel's Iron Dome defense system. Look, a fair topic to debate, but AOC notably voted just present and was apparently so distraught by it that she was in tears. Look, Israel's far from perfect. This week, they're under fire for the death of a 51-year-old journalist, which appears to be as a result of the firearm from Israel's military. But criticizing Israel is different from what these far-left progressives want to do, which is basically suggest that the nation of Israel is fundamentally illegitimate. Joining me now, former Congressman Steve Israel, a Democrat who served in New York's second and then third district from 2011 to 2017, Thanks so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. First, let me get your take on this resolution. Well, look, every member of Congress has the right to offer a resolution that reflects their views, no matter how bizarre, wild, wacky, ill-advised, and historically inept those views may be. Uh, and I do not want to exaggerate the importance of, of this resolution. It has a total ban of six co-sponsors out of 435 members. It's been referred to the House Foreign Affairs Committee, where I don't expect it's going to get much more attention than it has already. I would be surprised if it even receives a hearing. So this is a tree that's falling in a legislative forest. It expresses the views of a hardcore minority. And look, I'm a proud Democrat, uh, whether it is Taylor Green, or whether it is Rashida Tlaib, these views on the extreme uh, ought to be rejected and dismissed by the mainstream in the United States Congress. I completely agree with you. And so the question then is, 
why aren't more sort of moderate Democrats speaking out about this? And it sounds like the answer is because you think it's going nowhere. I don't think they know about it, quite honestly. I mean, if this, if this looked like it had some legislative traction, uh, if this was coming up at town hall meetings, if this was a real problem or, or challenge for the Democratic caucus, uh, this would be something that more members would talk about. I think this is one of the best kept secrets on Capitol Hill, a place where it's very hard to, to keep secrets. I also think that most of my colleagues, uh, Republicans and Democrats alike, believe that this is just bad policy and bad politics. It's bad policy because the future of security and peace in the Middle East will be negotiated multilaterally, not based on some historic misinterpretation of the past, but based on what's in the best interest of all parties in the future. And it's ill-advised politically going into a midterm election because I don't know of a single family who's sitting at their kitchen tables or their dining room tables this evening uh, and thinking about the Nakba. They're thinking about their future, their homes, their paychecks, their jobs. They're not talking about the Nakba. The fact that six members of Congress are on this one resolution is largely irrelevant to the electorate. Bad policy, bad politics, which is why I don't think this bill is going very far at well, all. Steve Israel, it sounds like the translation is, hey, Dan Abrams, what the heck are you doing this segment for? Who cares? Well, I didn't. I, <laughs> in April, I would never say that. <laughs> All right, it's going nowhere. Steve Israel, thank you so much for taking the thank time you, to come on the program and provide some perspective for us. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.